morning students how are you all today we are going to study an interesting topic how the camel got his hump repeat how the camel got his hump okay what do you see in this picture can you able to identify what is this very good this is the picture of a camel okay see the bulging part this two bulging part is known as the hump what is known as the hump of the camel is it very easy to get what i the desert children no it is very difficult to get water in the desert but the camel can able to survive for 6 to 7 months without food and water the camel can able to survive in the desert for 6 to 7 months without food and water because it stores the fat okay? it stores the fat in its hump so it can able to survive even if there is no food and water shall we move on to the story in the beginning of years when the world was so new all the animals were just beginning to work for man there was a camel and he lived in the middle of the howling desert because he did not want to work in the beginning of years when world was so new all the animals were just beginning to work for man okay when the world was introduced what happened the animals started to work okay the animals started to work for who they started to work for the man when the world was introduced who introduced the world who created the world god created the world okay so after uh, after the creation of the world the animals started to work for the man there was a camel and he lived in the middle of a howling desert so at the time there was a camel okay see here the camel is the picture of the camel so there was a camel and where the camel lived the camel lived in the middle of a howling desert so the camel is living in the middle in the center of the howling desert what is meant by howling desert is a large area okay large area that is filled with full of sand large area that is filled with full of sand okay he did not want to work so this camel doesn't want to work because the camel is very lazy okay the camel is very lazy doesn't want to do any sort of work okay next see food of camel now uh, we are going to see what does the camel eat sticks thorns tamarisks mulberry prickles okay sticks you all know what a stick means thorns what is meant by thorns a plant or the bushes okay a plant or the bushes uh, that has the short points a plant or the bushes that have short points tamarisks what is meant by tamarisks look at here tamarisk means a kind of desert plant a kind of desert plant a plant that grows only in the desert okay it is called as the tamarisk next milkweed milkweed is also a plant that secretes milky juice okay it's a plant that secretes milky juice next one prickles what is meant by prickles look at here the short pointed part on the plant so prickle is a short pointer plant okay so the food of the camels uh, camels stick thorns tamarisks mulberry prickles it is a excruciating iron it is a excruciating iron so what is excruciating iron means excruciating iron is nothing but uh, it is used to describe the camel okay so the excruciating iron means it is used to describe the camel if anybody spoke to him he said hum if anybody spoke to him he said hum if someone speaks to the camel what does it say this camel says only hum what is
Okay, next. The horse came to him on a Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. So, the world was introduced on the day okay, of Monday. Okay, the world has been introduced on Monday. At the time, who came? A horse came. Okay, a horse came with the saddle on his back. What is meant by saddle? Saddle is a seat. Okay, saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth. Look at the the meaning of bit is a metal bar used to control the horse. So it is a bar so that we can able to control the horse. While we ride. And say, camel, oh camel. See here, the horse is saying, camel, oh camel, come out and trot like this. So the horse is calling, camel, oh camel, come out, come away from the place where you are and trot. What is the meaning of trot? To move. Trot means to move from one place to another. So the horse won't be in a same place. It goes from one place to another. So the horse is calling the camel, come away from the from the place by you are and trot like the rest of us. Hum, said the camel. So what did the camel reply? Hum, said the camel. And the horse went away and told the man. So after the horse uh, is calling the camel, the camel replied only hum. So on hearing this, what did the horse do? The horse went away to the man. And the horse replied that the camel is saying only the word hum. Next, after the horse, who comes? Dog. Okay, the dog comes after the horse. The dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come and fetch and carry the rest of us. So after the horse, a dog is coming and the dog is carrying a stick in his mouth. Okay, it is carrying a stick in his mouth and says, Camel, oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. So it is calling the camel to come and have a stick in his mouth. Hum, said the camel. So what did the camel reply? Look at your hum, said the camel. And the dog went away and told the man. So after hearing the word hum, the dog ran away to the man, to the master. And it says that the camel is not coming. The camel replies only the word hum. Okay, have you understood this? Shall we read the hard words? Tamaris, a kind of desert plant. Tamaris, a kind of desert plant. Prickle, a short pointed pot on the plants. Prickle, a sharp pointed part on the plants. Bit, a metal bar used to control the horse. Bit, a metal bar used to control the horse. Trot, to move. Trot, to move. Okay, next to the dog, there comes an ox. Okay, camel, oh camel, come and plow. Uh, like the rest of us. So, the ox is calling the camel. Come, come away from the place where you are. And plow. What is the meaning of plow? Plow means plow in the soil. Okay, so that we can able to put the seeds. And from the seeds, the plants will grow. And the ox is calling the camel to come and plow. Like the rest of us. We are all working very hard. We are all plowing. So, you should also Plow like us. So come away from the place and work along with us. Hum, said the camel. And the hogs went away and told the man. So for that, the camel is replying only the word hum. On hearing this, the hogs went to the master. Okay? Camel, oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Hum, said the camel. And the hogs went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, 303, I am very sorry for you. So what happened at last? The man is calling the dog, the horse and the ox. Okay? So he is calling the three and he says that I feel very sorry for you. I feel very bad. 
Next, the hunting in the desert can't work. I am going to leave him alone. So, here the hunting refers to the camel. He says that the camel is not ready to work. So, I won't disturb him anymore. You must work double time to make for it. You must work double time. So, the man is saying that instead of the camel, you three have to work double time. Okay? At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Leo 3, I am very sorry for you that humping in the desert can't work. I am going to leave him alone. You must work double time to make for it. Okay, have you understood this? Next, that made the three very angry and they held up. Palavar and Indaba and Panjayat and the power on the edge of the desert. So what happened? The man said that the three have to work uh, two times more. Okay, for that the horse and the dog and the ox was very angry. They got very angry. So they had planned to make a palavar. Okay, what is the meaning of palavar? Chatter. Chatter means it's uh, nothing but a talk, okay? So, they have planned to arrange a palaver and indaba. Look at here, the meaning of indaba is large meeting. Large meeting. And panjayat and a powwow on the edge of the desert. You all know what is panjayat mean? And a powwow. See, the meaning of power is a meeting or discussion. Power means a meeting or a discussion. So, where they have planned to keep? On the edge of the desert. So they have planned to keep at the edge at the corner of the desert. Okay. They have the, the, made the three very angry and they held the palaver and Indaba and Anjayar and a power of the edge of the desert. The camel came chewing uh, on milkweed and talked with them. So at the time who came? The camel came. So the camel was chewing the milkweed. Milkweed means I already told it's a plant that secretes a milk. Okay? So it's chewing the milkweed and locked at them. So this camel is laughing at the horse, the dog and the ox. He said hum and went away again. So after that, what did, uh, what did the camel say? The camel said only hum and he went away from that place. Okay? That made the three very angry and they held the power and Dava and Panjayat and a power on the edge of the desert. The camel came chewing on Murphy and after that he said come and went away again. Shall we read from first children? Ox, camel, oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Hum. Said the camel and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three o three, I am very sorry for you that hunting in the desert can't work. I am going to leave him alone. You must work double time to make for it. That made the three very angry and they held the palava and indaba and panjayat and a power on the edge of the desert. The camel came chewing on milkweed and locked at them. He said, huh? And went away again. Okay, shall we read the hard words? Palava, chatter. Palava, chatter. Indaba, large meeting. Indava, large meeting. Power, a meeting or discussion. Power, a meeting or discussion. Okay, students, what do you see in this picture? This is the picture of Jin. Okay, see here. D J I N N. So you have to pronounce, this, uh, pronounce it as Jin. Jin means it is the spirit with magical power. Spirit with magical power. So this jinn is the in charge of all the deserts and it, and it has many magical powers. Okay? It comes rolling the cloud of dust to stop the power and power of the three. So this jinn is 
uh, coming to the rolling of dust. See here, rolling the cloud of dust. So, uh, this is the dust, okay. So, it comes like rolling the dust. To stop the palaver and power to the tree. What is in the palaver? I have already told palaver means it is a chatter, okay, a talk. And power to the tree. Power means it is a discussion or a meeting with the three. Who are the three? The horse, the dog and the ox. So, this jinn is coming to stop the palaver and power with the three. Jinn of all the deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle with a world so new and old? So, the horse is asking to the jinn that the world has been created now one day. Do you think it is right to be idle without doing any kind of work? So, the horse is asking to the jinn. Certainly not, said the jinn. So, for that, the uh, jinn is replying, definitely not. Everyone has to work in this world. No one should be very lazy without doing any kind of work. All have to work. Well, said the horse, there is a thing in the middle of your howling desert. With a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. So the horse is saying that there is a thing in this howling desert. Here the thing is compared to the camel. The horse says that the camel is a thing. So that camel is living in the howling desert. I already told howling desert means it is a area that is covered with full of sand. Okay. So he is uh, the horse says that the camel has a long neck and a long legs. But the camel is not ready to do any kind of work. The world was introduced on Monday. From Monday, the camel didn't any work. He won't trot. Uh, I already told uh, the meaning of trot is to move from one place to another. The meaning of trot is moving from one place to another. The horse says that the camel is not ready to go from one place to another. It remains in the same place. View, said the jinn, bristling, that's my camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? So, the jinn is saying that uh, the camel belongs to me. The camel belongs to me of uh, the Arabia. He says, hum, and the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. So, the jinn is asking, what does the camel says to you? For that, the dog replies, only the word hum. He won't fetch and carry. And also, the dog says, the camel is not ready to come and work. Uh, he won't uh, carry the stick in its mouth. Does he say anything else? Only hum, and he won't plough, said the fox. So, uh, next to the dog, uh, the jinn is asking to the ox, okay, what else does the camel say? So, for that, the ox replies, the camel says, only hum, and the camel is not ready to plow with the soil. Very good, said the jinn, I'll hum him if you will kindly wait a minute. So, the jinn replies, if you give me a minute, I will give a hum to the camel. The jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloth and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most cruciating idol looking at its own reflection in a pool of water. After that, the jinn is coming along the desert. Okay, the jinn is coming along the desert by rolling in the sand and he found the cruciating idol. Cruciating idol means it is a word that describes the camel. At last, the jinn found the camel. What did the camel do? The camel was looking his own reflection in the pool of water. So, there is a pool. In the pool, the camel is looking its own reflection. Okay. My long and bubbling friend, said the jinn, What's this? I hear of you are doing no work to the world so new and long and all. So, the jinn is asking to the camel, the world is very new. The world has been created just now only. But I hear you are not doing any kind of work. 
What is the reason for that? So the gin is asking to the camel. Hum, said the camel. So on hearing this, what did the camel reply? The camel replied only the word hum. The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand and began to think a great magic while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. So after that, the jinn was uh, sitting down. Okay, the jinn sat down. Uh, he is uh, holding his chin like this. Okay, the jinn is uh, holding his chin like this and he is thinking what to do. And at that time, the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. So the camel was again looking at his own reflection in the water. You have given the three extra work since Monday morning. All on account of your excruciating idleness, said the jinn. And he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. So the jinn is saying that you didn't work for the past three days because of your excruciating idleness. Yeah, because of your laziness, you didn't work for the past three days. And he went on thinking magic. So after that, um, the jinn was thinking what to do to make the camel work with his chin in his hand. So he was uh, holding his chin like this and thinking what to do. Hum, said the camel. Further the camel is replying, hum. I shouldn't say that again if I buy you, said the jinn. You might say once too often. So the jinn is saying that if I buy you, I won't use the word hum. But you are repeating the word again and again like hum, hum, hum. If I buy you, I won't use the word. And the camel said hum again, but no sooner he had said it than he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big hum. The camel said hum, and no sooner he had said it than he saw his back. So after Jin says, the camel is replying hum. Okay, after saying the word, the camel is looking at his back. So what happened? That he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big hum. So this hum begins to get larger. Okay, see the meaning of puffing is rising. So this uh, uh, hum is becoming larger and larger, it, uh, bigger. It becomes to rising. Okay. Do you see that, said the jinn, that's your very own hum that you have brought upon your very own self by not working. So the jinn is saying, have you noticed that? Have you noticed what is in your back? It is all because of that you didn't work so that you get your own hum. Today is Thursday and you have done no work since Monday. When the work began, now you are going to work. So what is the day today? The day today is Thursday. Now the world was created on Monday. From Monday you didn't do any kind of work. So this is the time to start your work. How can I, said the camel, put this hump on my back? For the camel is replying, how is it possible to work? I have a large, I have a big hump in my back. So how it's, a, uh, how it's uh, possible for me to work? That's made a purpose with the gen. All because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your hump. So the gin replies, it is all because of a purpose for me. So you can be able to work for three days without the food and water because you have already uh, eaten and you have already drank water for the past three days. Those fats will be stored in your hump. With the help of uh, the fat, you can be able to work for the another three days. And don't you ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the tree and behave. Hump yourself. 
So the gymnast has been come away from the place where you were and join along with the three. Who are the three? The horse, the dog and the ox. Okay. So join along with the three and start to work. And the camel hump himself, hump and all went away to join the three. So the camel is ready to work now and he goes to join the horse, the dog and the ox. And from the day to this, the camel always wear a hump. So on that day, the uh, camel got its hump because of his laziness of doing any kind of work. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the work. Okay students, from this lesson, what you have learned? We have to do all kinds of work. Okay, we should not be lazy at all. Shall we read? They came along the gym in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. And he stopped to Palawa and Pow Wow to the three. Jin of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle? To the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the Jin. Well, said the horse, there is a thing in the middle of a howling desert with a long neck and long legs. And he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't have brought. So the horse is going to the gym and says that there is a thing in the middle of your desert. That thing is not ready to work. It is not ready to trot from one place to another. View, said the gym, who's like, that's my camel. What does he say about it? He says, ha, said the dog. And he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only hum and he won't plow, said the ox. So, all the three are going to the gym and they are complaining about the camel. The gym is asking, what does the camel say? For that they are replying, the camel is saying, only the word hum. My long and public friend, Said the jinn, what's this I hear of you doing no work to the world so new and all. The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand and began to think a great magic. So what is the uh, camel did? The camel saw his own reflection in the pool of water and at that time the jinn started to think. I shouldn't say that anything if I buy you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. But the camel said, hum, again. But no sooner had he said it, than he saw this bag that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great big hum. So what happened after that? The camel got a big hum on his bag. Do you see that? said the jinn. That's your very own hum that you have brought upon your very own self by doing any kind of work. This has been made a purpose, said the jinn. All because you have missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your hum. And the camel hum himself and all and went to join the tree. And from the day to this, the camel always hears a hum. Okay students, this is for your home assignment. Write the synonyms, antonyms, past tense in your classwork note. Okay? Write the synonyms, antonyms, past tense in your classwork note. See you in the next class. Thank you students.